Hey, Monday night, man, I'm fired up. I hope you are too. What a great Easter season this is. You know, in the church calendar, when we have Easter, it begins actually the Easter season that goes till the day of Pentecost. So uh, what a great time every day for it to be Easter. Easter isn't the end of something. It was actually the beginning of our freedom and the grace of God alive and active in our heart in the book of Acts. And I could go on, but we got to get right to the thing, which is hashtag CMN Brotherhood, hashtag CMN Brotherhood, because nothing happens without a great team. Jeremiah 29, 7 this is the team that was in Babylon, and uh, God speaks to them. And Jeremiah 29, 11, we know, is that great promise, my thoughts for you. God says, I know my thoughts for you. In other words, they don't know. Anybody telling you something negative, they don't know. God says, I know my thoughts for you, to give you a future and a hope, not for your destruction, but, but that my vision for you is that you expand, extend, and increase. And so uh, Jeremiah 29, 7, though, is part of that thing. Here's what God was saying to you and to me through the lives of the Hebrew people. He says, uh, Jeremiah 29, 7, work for the success of the city I have sent you to. Pray to the Lord for that city. If it succeeds, you too will enjoy success. And David's going to put up another translation, NIV. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Everything we're doing on Monday Night Men with Christian Men's Network, the Global Fatherhood Initiative, the Dangerous Nations Initiative, all of that is about increasing the kingdom of heaven, establishing the local church right there in our community. For you and me, building strong men and strong churches is the answer to the chaos in culture today. Make a difference. Hey, I want to give you a little, there's a little sidebar. <laughs> yeah, I know. Starting with a sidebar. A lot of times I get a little sidebar halfway through, but at least I started with the opening scripture. A little sidebar. Are you praying for your men by name? It's really key. It's something we hit in majoringinmen.com. Majoringinmen.com is the website in which we have 12. And it used to be a fee for that, but now it's uh, because of the because of the generosity of Friends of Christian Men's Network, we now have that absolutely no cost. Majoringinmen.com. And one of the key things we talked about in that is praying for your men by name. Praying for your friends. Praying, praying for your family by name. Pray for wisdom to speak into their lives. Pray for the ability to see. Uh, pray for your men to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, pray over your local men's movement that it's not just another program, but it actually is alive. And this is what we're talking about with hashtag CMN Brotherhood, is that it's alive and your men are connected. Here's what prayer does, though. When you pray for your men by name or pray for your family or your friends and loved ones, prayer does three things. And it's one of the things that Maximize Manhood talks about and other tools that we have for discipling men. Number one Prayer produces intimacy with the one you're praying to. So as you're praying to the Father, you're more intimate with Him. You're closer to Him. That's what prayer does. It, it connects us, pulls us close together. Because prayer is a conversation. That's what conversation does. And then secondly, you're, you become intimate with the one you're praying with. So if you're praying with your son, or you're praying with your wife, you're praying with a friend, there's a connection that happens in the Spirit realm. And thirdly, if you ever prayed for missionaries or prayed for uh, a group of people or prayed for a friend of a friend, and then you meet that man later, you meet that missionary later and you go, whoa, I feel like I know you. I've been praying for you. Why? Because prayer produces intimacy with the one you're praying for. So as you pray for the men in your church, the men in your sphere of influence, Something happens in the spiritual realm that happens no other way. Prayer does that. Power of prayer. All right, we're talking about the essence of brotherhood. And uh, it's the basis for all great results. Uh, a great book I recommend to you is my friend Sam Chand. In his book, uh, it's called Bigger, Faster Leadership. And it's the story of the making of the Panama Canal. And it's, it's absolutely a fantastic, fascinating look at teamwork. 
and, and how things had to shift and change and leadership had to move into a place of team. You know, we have a vision, but it takes a team to do it. The vision of Christian Men's Network is to incarnate Christ into the hearts of men. That's why the number one thing everywhere we go is presenting Jesus Christ. That's, that's the foundation. That's the baseline. And then it's to connect them with the truth that manhood and Christ-likeness are synonymous. So the ministry to men is really about that. It, but it's all done with a team. The results we just had in Peru, that's a team, an amazing team. Dr. Robert Berger and Christian Shahi and Pastor Taylor Berger and the others that are involved in that, hundreds of pastors, and remarkable results as we commissioned over 150 men in one weekend in Lima, Peru, and then on to Bogota, Colombia, and then on to Monterey, Mexico. In Monterey, Mexico, the stuff's blowing up. I'll give you a testimony. In fact, I'll put it on social media of one pastor that came up and talked to me. He said, I've gone from 30 men in three months to 120 men in my church. Bam! That's what it's about. And then next month, uh, we're in Egypt. So pray for that. We need uh, prayer partners. We need finances. We need everything it takes to do a major outreach. But I want to give you, um, open up my computer to some testimonies that they just sent me. I'll just read a couple. Um, and we'll put a lot of these on our email, Brave Men email. If you don't get that, make sure you go to cmn.men, subscribe to Brave Men email. I had problems with my family. I couldn't communicate with them while I was with them while I was studying. Learning began. How do I talk to them, listen to them, have a conversation with them? Many of these problems were solved through the help of the support of the men, Maximize Manhood men's group. Here's another one. Before studying the book, Maximize Manhood, I thought manhood meant providing money and living in my house like a strong man. In other words, he's saying like a dictator. My words are orders that everyone in the house follows. But I discovered that manhood, manhood involves understanding and dialogue at home and gentleness and caring. Dude, how different is, and this is just uh, in the first two and a half, basically two months of having maximized manhood groups in Egypt. When I studied the book, I found that I was studying Touch the Reality We Live In, even though it's translated. It means the one who wrote it doesn't live with us. But the book speaks to me, and the principles apply to me and all of us in our group. In other words, he's saying, hey, this book was translated by some man, and, and it's translated from a book written by a man in another country years ago. Of course, we updated it, and... Uh, a lot of hard work by a lot of great people into updating it. Joanne Webster and Jacob Bailey and everyone else involved, Ferris Abraham and all the translation team. Unbelievable. That's what's happening. What makes that work? Brotherhood. See, even when Joshua won the Battle of Jericho, Joshua won the Battle of Jericho. He had an army marching with him. It wasn't just him. It was an army with him. When Jesus sent out the disciples, he sent them out two by two. And he said, hey, you know, I want you to go together to be a team. I want brotherhood. Daniel, there's another great man in the Bible. Daniel had this, you know, if you, if you read through this, Daniel had this unbelievable life. Great man of character and courage. But we know of at least three friends, and we know there are many others that were in the school of the Magi that he began. So there's all these other men around him. It made him successful. Moses had Aaron and her, and uh, don't forget Miriam, his sister, who was a prophetess. So what happens if you're the only guy? I'll give you a couple. Uh, Jonah became suicidal. Gideon lost sight of his purpose. Samson couldn't overcome his addictions. Even Abraham had a stormy family life. You go, really? Yeah. He had a concubine. I don't know what you call that today. He had a concubine, and a concubine had six sons, and, the, and one of the middle ones was a guy named Midian. You ever heard that one before? Because the Midianites became like a, bam, thorn in the flesh to Israel. Uh, I mean, for centuries. So that's Abraham. So I'm not saying it's, it's not right to be the only man that's willing to stand up. What I'm saying is the optimum that Christ modeled for us was a team. And build your team. And so what I want to do, I want to set some things in order for us. This is about, this is an increase. This is about building the local church. We are passionate about it. It is my focus. 
I tell men all the time, they say, hey, we want to do a great event, have you come in. I go, yeah, but is there time for us to meet with the local pastors? And, and in a number of countries and places that we've gone, because they think as Americans, well, they, they want some good photos. I'm not into good photos. I'm into great results. And the great results happen when you reach servant leaders, men of influence. And it might be like some of the stuff we did in Egypt when we first started. I remember one meeting with one man on the banks of the Nile River. We had coffee, very dark Egyptian coffee. We talked for quite some time. When we got to the end of that conversation, he said, I, I would like to be a part of this, and I would like our churches to be a part of it. Well, it turns out 160 churches as a result of that, with all of their pastors and leaders, are being involved in the Maximize Manhood movement across Egypt. Just So, you know, it's that one thing. It's, it's that. And it's about the process of helping men be discipled into the image of Jesus Christ. So I want to set some things in order because we are, we are about process. We're about the passion, the person of Jesus. But we're about the process because the process is what incarnates Christ in the hearts of men. So because of this, what a disciple does, let me frame this, what a disciple does is, is do Christ-like things. He's a man of goodness, loyalty, honor, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's talk about Elijah. Elijah in 1 Kings 19, well, I won't read the whole thing, but Elijah had a problem. You know about this. Elijah is this amazing guy. He's raised a young man from the dead. He's had miracles happen. Now he goes into battle against these hundreds of pagan priests. And, uh, and he calls fire from the sky. He says, hey, you know, here's a sacrifice. Here's a sacrifice. You guys do it. See if fire comes from heaven. See what your God does. Something. Anything. Nothing happens. These guys beat themselves. They do all this flagellation and stuff. And then Elijah goes, you know, put some water on mine. Put some water on mine. We'll see what happens. Bam! Fire from heaven. Now, here's a guy that's done all these things. And then the king and the queen, Jezebel, Ahab, they, she puts out this contract on his head. Like, hey, kill this guy because he killed all my priests, hundreds of them. And he runs. He's tired. He's disconnected. He's not running with somebody. He's got a servant, and he even tells that guy, hey, just stay behind. I'm out. And he sits under a tree, and he becomes suicidal. And he says, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. There's nobody else here. Oh, what am I going to do? And God says to Elijah, he says, hey, listen, you know, i got 7,000 other men. So my question has always been this. Why didn't Elijah know some of those men? Why, why wasn't one of those men with him? Why weren't there a couple? Why weren't there a few hanging with him when he called down fire from heaven? I think he got so myopic, so, so, so centered in the ministry that he was putting his hands to that he left out one of the most important parts of that ministry, which is brotherhood. Brotherhood. Now, once Elijah knew that, began to change the way he operated. He ended up with a son in a faith. He ended up with other things that happened. And it was incredible, the legacy of his life. But we can become so consumed with, the, with this task of ministry that we neglect the core element of being a healthy man of God. And that's brotherhood. Designed by God. I, I'll tell you, let me do a little chemical thing. You know, designed by God. It's, uh, and that is dopamine. Have you heard of dopamine? Dopamine is like, well, dopamine, uh, Nancy Houston tells us that dopamine is the secret weapon of keeping a marriage together. It's that thing that, that thing that happens where you're fired up, you're excited, something goes right. You just feel like you're a champion. And, uh, or like, you know, uh, when your wife walks in, gives you a kiss and you're like, boom, dopamine hit. And uh, we talk about that a lot, but here's one of the most important parts of the elements of that God made us with, secret weapon, if you will, is called oxytocin. And oxytocin is a chemical se secreted when people bond, when they come together spirit to spirit, soul to soul. Women, see, here's the thing, women bond face to face, but men bond shoulder to shoulder facing a challenge. 
So that's why we include men in what we do. Hashtag CMN Brotherhood. If you, if you went on social media right now and put hashtag CMN Brotherhood, up would come all these things that we're doing around the world. Why? Because we're doing it as allies. None of this stuff is being done separately, apart by one guy. We don't have one figurehead that's like, if that guy shows up, it's an actual event. We've got events going on all over the world, all the time, with Christian Men's Network. And they're major events. They're awesome stuff. They're things that impact communities and culture. But I don't have to be there. Bishop Bronner doesn't have to be there. Dr. Berger, Eddie Leo, they don't have to be there for it to be a significant event. It's about the movement, brotherhood, ministry to men. Now, here, now let me run through a couple things. John 15, 15 through 17, New Living Translation. And David will put that up. I no longer call you slaves because the master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends. Since I've told you everything the father told me, you didn't choose me. I chose you, appointed you to go, produce lasting fruit. Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. Oxytocin, friendship, brotherhood. A ministry of men can be the result of purpose and communication and strategy and honor and work. But fundamentally, a ministry of men is about friendship. Now, at the outset of this whole series of increased strong men, strong church, has been fundamentally, how do we do this? Next week, I've got, I've got a real key for you next week that I've already been writing up and working on. But Abraham, think about Abraham, the father of faith. We talked about him a minute ago, but think about him in his role as a father of faith, this remarkable man. The secret weapon he had is talked about in James chapter 2, verse 23. The half-brother of Jesus wrote this. And, this. and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. What was Abraham's secret to doing what he did? Being the father of faith? He was a friend of God. Isaiah 41, 8. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. The power of the life of Abraham was that he was a friend of God. The power of a ministry to men is Friendship, the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, the redeemed life, the incarnation of Christ, all of those things fundamental. But then what keeps it from fracturing into a lot of independent spirit things that you and I have all seen is brotherhood. And brotherhood really happens out of connecting together, hitting something, going after something facing a challenge. I love the fact that when, uh, when God talks about Abraham, he says, my friend, it's personal, possessive. Uh, I have, I've got a couple things about friendship. Write these down. I know you've got a great memory, but write, these, write this down, okay? A friend is someone you're strongly attached to emotionally, but I love this, this word. A brother is not necessarily a friend, but a friend is always your brother. Let me say it again. A brother is not necessarily a friend, but a friend is always your brother. Friend is a covenant word. Uh, Rod Anderson, who's our, one of our resident theologians, he wouldn't consider himself that, but he is. Uh, Rod Anderson taught me this about blood is thicker than water. He says, blood is thicker than water doesn't talk about it's not about somebody being born from the same mother. It's not about that. He said it's actually about covenant. Blood is thicker than water. Literally means that two people may be born, uh, of, that though people may be born of the same mother, same water, the covenant of blood is stronger. A blood covenant is deeper than even those born as brothers in the flesh. It, it means this. It means that even though somebody was born of the same birth water, the blood covenant, Covenant is stronger than even that. Blood is thicker than water. A friend is someone who talks good about you behind your back. A friend, I've always liked this. A friend says, hey, that was a good word, even when it wasn't. A friend is, who kno is, a friend is someone who knows everything about you and still likes you. And this one, my favorite. A friend always brightens the room when they enter. Others brighten it when they leave. All right, 
I'm going to move ahead. This is, uh, this is so strong. Proverbs 18, 24. There is a friend that is closer than a brother. What's that? It's covenant with Christ. Like Abraham, listen, like Abraham, the promise was attacked. Genesis 15. Abraham's got a covenant with God and he had to chase the vultures away. All right. Like Abraham, your promise will be attacked. Whatever it is you want to do in your life, the enemy's going to try to stop it. Resistance is always there. It's part of our lives, part of who we are. But in your darkest, toughest moments, you know who's there? Your friends, your brothers. Jesus is there, but you've got to have somebody here on the other end of that phone. When you're isolated and bound up with the issues of life, you've got friends. When you can't see any way out, you've got friends. Perhaps one of the most important parts of this Christian men's network movement isn't the ministry we assemble, but it's the friendships we build. I can think of many, many men involved in our ministry who now have friendships that will, that will last through the end of their lives. Friendships that help connect them. Guys they can call when there's issues. Over the next few days, if you would, pray with me over this. That what we do with Christian Men's Network and what you do in your life is build friendships. I pray that the Lord begins to bring new friendships and new relationships into your life. You need men who don't speak negativity into your life. You need men who have a positive mindset. You need friendships, men who love you, who will listen to you. Uh, I was talking with Michael Bolton the other day, and I said, what's one of the most important things with a group of men? He said that somebody listens to your story. He said, we seldom get to tell that. It's very important. Gather the brotherhood. Don't be a lone ranger. You know what a one-man army is? Yeah, dead. <laughs> There's just no Rambos in all of this. That's a movie. And so what you and I have to do is not only be friends with him, but have friendship with those around us. Hashtag CMN Brotherhood. I'm going to pray this over you. In fact, I'm going to just do it right now. I'm going to take a minute as we close this Monday night, men, and just pray friendship over you. This spirit of Easter, this time as Jesus sang that song, Psalm 22 on the cross, and as he sang that to his brothers and, and disciples and mom and those who were at the cross, there was something that happened that caused them to all go pray together. They were together. When Jesus appeared to them, where were they? They were together. Why? Because that was the DNA of Jesus. Father, I pray for my brother right now. I pray great friendships. I pray brotherhood over him. I pray the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit for him to speak life into others and for friends to speak life into his life. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity and this privilege we have to be brothers together in the increase of the kingdom of heaven as we follow Jesus Christ as brothers with reckless abandon. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for being with me on Monday Night Men. I'll see you next week. Remember, hope is alive. Hope has a name. Hope's name is Jesus.